Now, there are lots of other applications. So, for example, you can record all sorts of asset ownership on the blockchain. Yeah. Uh, in fact, there's um, uh, something called the uh, Ethereum Improvement Proposal number 821, which actually talks about how to manage assets on the blockchain. So, you, for example, you can put, um, you know, domains that you own. So if you own CNN.com, you can record that on the blockchain. Uh, this is for digital assets. If you own stocks, you can record that on a blockchain. Why would you want to record stock ownership on a blockchain? Well, for example, if you want to deal with um, voting, voting rights for, for stocks, uh, often there's a problem with understanding who is allowed to vote on a particular um, uh, stock, vote, uh, stock election. Uh, well, if the blockchain records exactly who owns which stock, maybe it's not so difficult to actually collect uh, votes appropriately. You can imagine, uh, even for us at the university, we're thinking of putting Stanford transcripts on the blockchain. So the interesting thing there is an employer who wants to look at the potential employee's transcripts can verify that the transcript that he was uh, handed to by the employee uh, actually is the latest version of the transcript. Yeah. So the, the blockchain will record at any given time what the latest version of that student's transcript is. Um, and uh, any because the blockchain is public, an employer can verify that he's looking at the latest version of the transcript or any other legal document for that matter. And we already talked about uh, maintaining kitties on the blockchain. Yeah. Uh, physical assets could also be tracked on the blockchain. So, for example, if you buy a work of art, well, there's a, it's a one of a kind work of art. It's kind of interesting. If you record the work of art, art on the blockchain, you can basically have the entire provenance chain of the work of art to see exactly how it was transferred from owner to owner, and that's all recorded on the blockchain, so you can't, so forgeries become much, much, much harder. Yeah, if someone wants to prove to you that they own that particular work of art, they have to use the secret key that corresponds to that work of art to prove to you that they own that work of art. Similarly, you can imagine car vehicle identification numbers, car VINs. Instead of storing everything at the DMV, who knows, maybe the DMV loses some information, maybe they uh, inappropriately transfer one car uh, from one owner to another. Well, instead, all that can be stored on the blockchain um, and uh, anyone can verify who owns which car and it's easy to prove uh, car, car ownership as well. Now, to be honest, these are uh, more speculative applications of, of the blockchain. There are projects that are trying to build these things, but um, Time will tell whether this is, in fact, a successful use of the blockchain or not. Regardless, if you want to implement uh, asset management man management on the blockchain, essentially what gets written to the blockchain is a transaction that says, you know, asset type, say, work of art, asset ID, you know, the particular uh, work of art we're talking about, and here is the address, the hash of the public key of the owner. So if the owner wants to prove that they really own that uh, work of art, all they have to do is prove that they know the secret key corresponding to this public key. Okay, so that's basically how this would work. So again, you always have to ask, why do we want to put assets on the blockchain? I kind of explained it, that um, essentially uh, asset transfers can only happen with the owner permission. The secret key is needed for every single asset transfer. It's easy to prove ownership and authenticity claims. Simply, I just proved that I know the secret key corresponding to the current public key recorded on the blockchain. And then the interesting thing is provenance and authenticity are all recorded on the blockchain. So it's easier to tell that you're not looking at a forgery. This might equally be applicable to, uh, you know, potentially pharmaceuticals and, and, um, and other, other uh, domains and so on. So there's a lot of interest in managing assets on the blockchain. But as I said, time will tell whether this is, this is a real killer app for the chain. Okay, good. So this gives you kind of an idea for applications for the blockchain outside of cryptocurrencies. Now that we understand that, um, we said that everything is public, which could be problematic in some situations. So the next thing we're going to look at is basically how we do privacy on the blockchain.